All right, so why your diet sucks? Because it does suck. It does? Big time. Mark, stop laughing. <laughs> He's our editor. Eating like, cheesecake uh, right now. <laughs> he, he's eating the cheesecake my girlfriend made for my birthday. <laughs> Say thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Is it good? Perfect. All right. All right. So why your diet sucks? And like you can like you can still eat cheesecake and get some results if you have a method. If if, if there is a method to the madness. Yeah. And you're just not winning it like a crazy person. You're not just eating like a. 15 year old unattended boy like most of the people that come to us eat yeah right? but but Anthony I'm busy I don't have time to eat oh so that's a that no. sounds like a legit excuse most people are not busy nowadays and always remember we have guns yeah <laughs> and Mr. Roosevelt here was a tough nut and Mr. Roosevelt I mean Roosevelt. Roosevelt was busy he got in shape so what's that's your, a good one what's your excuse yeah yeah you have kids yeah. So what we're getting at is basically that you saying that you're busy is your own limiting belief, right? Like everybody's busy. If you're an adult nowadays, you know, world, you have, you've got a family, you've got a job, like you're going to be busy. Uh, if it really matters, if your nutrition is a priority, if you want to have better energy, if you want to get better results out of your training, you just have to learn to make your diet. I know busy people who are fit yeah, and in shape. And I know busy, busy people who are fit and in shape and they weren't. Since they're very early adulthood, I know people who got in shape as busy people. Yeah, you've got CEOs working twelve hours a day that still train consistently. Fourteen, fifteen, like fifteen. You've yeah, it's a mindset. It's a, it's a mindset shift so because we see it all the time in our program. People come in and they start at, at the beginning before they see they start seeing results. They say, "Oh, I don't have time. Oh, mm-hmm. it's very hard for me." And of course, it is sometimes very hard. We're yep. not, uh, we're like we're not reducing this thing. We're not. We're not uh, calling you a lazy bastard. Although some of you might be. <laughs> and I think the problem is that you know people pair that with the all or nothing mindset, and that's where everything crumbles. Because you know most people think that you need to train three hours a day. All of your meals have to be like Instagram worthy. Uh, like if you want to be in shape, which is completely not true like if you had a look at my diet or john's diet uh you would understand that you know it's like a toddler put the plates together put the dishes together (laughs) put the meals together like but uh, a toddler who understands protein who understands you know not eating processed stuff all the time and eating according to your goals so that's the difference yeah like your meals don't have to be complicated like most people saying they're extremely busy and for that reason they can't uh, follow a proper nutrition and a proper diet is first of all because of uh, a knowledge gap they don't possess all the know-how about mm-hmm. how to how a good nutrition plan uh, can be set up or what it is um, and sometimes there are other problems like stress like binge eating like all those other uh, things but these uh, they won't fix themselves until you start putting a structure to your diet mm-hmm. the most important thing is to want to find solutions, to seek for solutions instead of laying it out, like saying, you know what, I am busy, I can't do anything about it, because most people are busy. We've seen people who are busy and still get results, uh, but um, trying to find solutions instead of um, being in that fixed mindset where you can't do things, a victim mindset, things happen to me, Mm -hmm. right? and not trying to find solutions, this is the biggest trap there is. So if you're in this trap, you can either change or remain the same. Uh, No matter what we say, it's going to land. Yeah. And like, we we do understand that, you know, like all the information out there is just making things so complicated nowadays. Like uh, you have to understand, like if you want a diet book that is going to sell, you know, you you can have a diet book that tells, you know, just eat enough protein, you know, cover your basic needs and calories and like, that is not sexy information, right? That is why all like the, the best selling books and uh, you have all these trends that are you know always making, typically like they make one category of food the villain, right? You know, in, in the 90s, it was maybe saturated fat, then it was carbs, then it was gluten, then it, you know, it became paleo, then it became... Uh, if it fits your macros, carnival, you can whatever like, the fuck you want without like caring about People protein. used to be in great shape, you know, since the beginning of time right and they didn't have a clue of what those diets were yeah if you have a, a look at uh all-time strongmen and mm-hmm. all-time 
um, bodybuilders. They had no idea about any research. They had no idea about how to eat properly. They just found what worked for them and yeah. they, they applied it relentlessly with consistency and um, they just got better and better at it until they were at their goals. Um, so just to, just to help you guys find um, some of your biggest problems regarding diet and why your diet sucks, um, what do you feel is, uh, is or are, whatever you want, you can say one thing or you can say many, are the culprits of a diet that sucks? What, what are people doing that is screwing up their diets? So, uh, you are definitely under eating protein and micronutrient dense foods, like, you know, veggies, unprocessed stuff. As a result, you're constantly hungry all of the day. So that's number one, you know, get enough protein, get enough, uh, foods that are real, basically, you know, stop eating processed crap. And before we go there, Mm -hmm. like there are some more basic things, like the fact that most people have no structure, no method, no system. They're just winning it. Yeah. 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 And, And like, of course, it all leads to what Anton is saying, but mm. the most important thing is most people, um, just like with their training, they don't know what they're doing. They don't have a plan. They're just winging it. And if you don't plan to succeed, well, as a cliche says, you just, you're planning to fail. Exactly. Yeah. It's like you can't wing it, especially since you're, if you, if you have a, like so many competing um, responsibilities, so many competing things that you need to do that they're all asking for your time, energy and attention, you will not be able to follow a proper diet and lose weight and uh, get to your goal body if you don't have a plan. Yeah. You, you can't, like, you will be stressing yourself way too much because you have no plan. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you had a plan and you knew exactly what you're eating and what you're going to eat or just have some um, meals that you know... Um, how like how many portions of protein there is in there, how many carbs, how many fats, and you knew exactly how to piece them together, then yeah. you could mix and match your meals and have a plan that works for you, yeah. right? Because most people don't measure anything. Yeah. Like they don't know how much they're eating. So I think this is a huge, this is another thing. Like most people say, oh, I, I eat healthy. Mm. I eat healthy. So you need to create a system in the beginning. You know, you need to create some kind of structure. Obviously, that's going to take more work in the beginning. But once you have that in place, as John said, you know, things are going to get so much easier. I think people spend like half of their day thinking about what they're going to eat. I I recently read that in some kind of study or whatever. But uh, yeah, like it's going to take obviously some work in the beginning. But once you have it set it up, you know, uh, like it's, it's automated. Like both me and John... We don't think like more than I don't know a few minutes about our nutrition every day. I know, I'm eating the same. Th- I've been eating the same thing for over ten years. What do you feel? <laughs> do yeah. you feel that I think about it? Yeah. I don't think about it because there are more important things to think about in exactly. life rather than uh, what you're going to eat, how many portions, how many calories it is. And while I'm at it, yes, we do get our clients, our trainees, to measure and track because um, this is how you get to realize what you what you mm-hmm. what you've been doing wrong this is how you uh, start improving things and if you don't track you don't have data and if you don't if you don't have data then you don't know what you're doing you're simply winning it as we just said yeah. so yeah uh we do this we've been eating the same thing for over 10 years mm-hmm. and yes our clients do have to think about what will they will be eating yeah. even though we just said that thinking about all the time is bad mm-hmm. of course at first, you will be thinking about it until it, until it becomes second nature. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Like, like you can't expect to get on a surfing board and surf huge waves and ride huge waves uh, straight from the get go. Yeah, it's it's like driving a car in the beginning. You know, like you you feel that you have to do all these things. You know, press the the gas pedal, the brake, the you know the the shifts. The in the beginning, you can't even drive if you have music on. Right. You need to be super focused. Like once you learn to drive, you don't even think about it. You know, you're, you're thinking about different things while you're getting in the car, turning it on and driving, you know, to where you want to go. So this is what we help our trainees do, like make it second nature. Yeah, which is exactly why we, we have them realize what they're eating and their eating habits. And what we get all the time is, hey, John, hey, Anthony, um, we, uh, it's the first time I ever understood how much I was eating because I just tracked 
what I've been eating mm-hmm. during our assessment weeks yeah, that we yeah. have with them. Um, and you if know, you're getting like 1,000 calories just from your drinks, right? Your your fancy frappuccino, whatever people drink at Starbucks nowadays. With yeah, but I just had a coffee, yeah. right? I just yeah. had a coffee. 500 calories. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. goes your, your caloric uh, surplus. I, I'm eating healthy, though. I'm just mm. eating, drinking coffee, yeah. eating fruits, yeah. 20 portions of fruits. 20 just bananas like Mark, a day. <laughs> just, just like Mark, who doesn't... Mark? Yeah. Oh, he's raising the middle finger. Maybe we saw him the guns. How dare you? Maybe we saw him You're the guns. You're going to pay for this. Yeah. On the next podcast, I swear. On the next training. The next workout. On the next podcast, I'm going to have his picture here as, as if he's diseased. <laughs> okay. So, uh, let's move along. So, yeah. uh, if I can eat clean during the week, can I just let go during the weekend? Nah. That's the biggest mistake. So, people, most people eat... Um, well, let's just say well. Decently. They abide. Um, some people, not most people. Yeah, they, like, mm. yeah, some people, not all people, of course, but many people who do well yeah. during the weekdays when their schedule is standardized and it's set mm-hmm. and it's always the same, they do well. But when the weekend comes, all hell breaks loose, right? Yeah. Like they start like, oh, it's the weekend now. Like, they cross the days of the calendar as if they don't exist, mm. as if these days are in the Bermuda Triangle or something, you know? So, um, as if the calories don't matter. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't know. I think like two out of three of the people we coach do that. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. They go off the rails um, during the weekends and they screw up. They mess up their whole... Uh, the, the whole week, like you, you've been trying to be good, let's say good, like mm-hmm. this, um, in brackets. Um, they, they're trying to, to do well and put a lot of effort into their nutrition during the weekdays. But then when the weekend comes, as I said, all hell breaks loose because now they don't have the set schedule. They don't have the set standard. They go out with friends. They go out with their kids and nutrition like takes the, the back seat. Yeah. They take the back seat and then... When Monday comes around and they weigh themselves and they mm. weigh way too much, then they freak out yep. and they start cutting calories. Um, and they start cutting a lot of their food out. So they start getting hungry again. Now they're more prone to binge eating. And what, what I'm trying to get at is that... And it usually starts on, on Friday, right? Friday night. So if you're eating clean Monday to Friday night, like, and you're not eating two and a half days, almost three days out of the week properly that's like 40 percent of your week so you're if you're eating decently 60 percent of your week and like crafting 40 percent of your week like what do you expect like it's not gonna work right this doesn't mean again that you have to eat super clean that you can't have pancakes with your kids on a sunday morning you know we can make that work uh, I, I would argue that if you are overweight and if you have been eating like shit for most of your life mm-hmm. then you shouldn't make you shouldn't try to add all these little things in. You should start having some structure first. Sure. And as sure. you go, yeah. you then, uh, you can then transition once you have the structure towards a bit more flexible eating sometimes. Yeah. Exactly. Because you've been eating like shit for your whole your whole life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, in the beginning, you know, you you have to be very, very mindful and you have to, to build a proper foundation until you start gaining some momentum with your goals. And, you know, slowly along the way, you can figure out how to have a diet that is more flexible. Uh, like, it's not like me and John don't eat, you know, cheesecake or uh, more of the fun stuff. But, you know, that's not how we started when we wanted to lose maybe weight. Plus, and we know what to do to mitigate for that. Exactly. Yeah. And still be on uh, on the way to our goals while eating stuff we also like sometimes. But most of our diets are like 80%, 90% strict, mm-hmm. 90% the same stuff over and over again. Yeah. And then we have this 10% that is when we go in it out, when we eat some cheesecake or whatever. Or there is there might be a week which is a bit more loose, um, but we make up for it. Yeah, course correct. That's a big one. I think like a lot of our trainees in the beginning, you know, when we're starting to, to coach them, uh, they're, they're going to eat like really well for five day- days. They're going to mess up one meal and then it's gonna you know they're gonna start getting downhill. into that black or white mindset yeah i screwed one meal so i might as well you know eat like crap for the next two days like everybody screws up 
But, you know, you want to make sure that you don't miss twice, as we yeah. like to say. And the analogy that I use for it, and sorry, Anthony, about that, but I've been using it way before I met you, is as if you fall down, scratch your leg, and then you take a, a chainsaw and you chop it off. <laughs> yeah. Just because you scratched it. Now, because you scratch your leg. That's what I did. I chopped my leg <laughs> off because I met up once. I scratched my knee. <laughs> True story. So it was an nutrition so you, problem. You stole that from me, from my story. Be honest. I can't do about it. Skin me, just like Mark. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. So then, all or nothing mindset. Mm. Um, like Big one. It, like it doesn't work. Most people think they have to be either on diet or off diet. Yeah. You can. Um, like even if you mess up one meal, you can just jump right back at it. Mm-hmm. Right on the next meal, like one meal isn't going to make you fat. Yeah, one meal isn't going to make you skinny. Same thing. Just don't much. don't don't do that. The the screw it effect. I also like to call it that. Like like that. Right. Like ah, I missed one meal, so screw it. I'm gonna fuck up the the whole rest of my day. Like yeah, it, it doesn't have to be like that. Like I mess up my diet some days. You know, John does. But you know, once we mess up one meal, we're gonna make sure that the next one is you know on point. Yep. Yep, and there is no one way to go about your nutrition. There is no one way that works. This is how we coach people. We don't say, oh, you have to eat like um, all these meals, um, all these complicated meals. You have to eat um, uh, like five uh, almonds or um, just a hair of spinach. If a hair is a unit of measurement for spinach, but whatever. Um, we, we don't go about it this way because there are many ways that work for different people. So I'm not going to tell you exactly what to eat, but I'm going to, we're going to help you and coach you on yeah. that. Um, it doesn't matter if, like, some people may, be meal, may like meal prepping their food for the whole week. Some others may like to meal prep for three days ahead. Yeah. Some others may want to just have so simple meals that they require no cooking. And that works too. That's what I do most of the time. Yeah. Like I cook like 15 or 20 minutes a day, just some ground meat. Mm -hmm. Then my other meals, they're all like sandwiches and Greek yogurts and mm -hmm. protein supplements and fruits and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Different things work for different personalities. It's not going to be like a one approach for everybody. Uh, and that's, that's why coaching is important, like having someone to help you figure out what works for you. Yeah. For, for example, some people may like fasting. Other people may not like yeah. fasting. Yep. Some people may like fasting some of the time, but mm -hmm. not all of the time or some of the days. Don't go all or nothing about it. You don't need to dogmatize everything. Yeah. Like dogmas don't work because they're extreme cases of things. Mm -hmm. You need to be uh, more flexible in your thinking. Yeah, just, just find what works for you and go with that. And that might change along the way. Like if you're single, you know, it doesn't mean that the same way you used to eat is going to work now that you have a family and, you know, two kids and all that. Uh, so you also have to learn to adapt, but um, yeah, you have to find what works in each situation of, you know, the phase of the life that you're in. Exactly. So what do you do about it? That's a, like, what do we recommend that you do if you want to um, unsuck your diet, mm -hmm. if you want to make it work? Yeah. So what, what, like, what we recommend is that you should um, create, find meals that work for you for your circumstances for your preferences for your goals like if you like uh, someone might say but I, I like eating pizza no but that doesn't work for your goals if you want to lose like um 10 15 pounds yeah. you may eat it just like uh, once or twice a month or you may just eat a little bit every week mm -hmm. but you can't do it all the time and expect results so it has too much like your your preferences your circumstances um and uh, work for your goals. And if it checks all these boxes, then you will go, you're going to like your nutrition. Sure, you may get hungry. If you want to lose weight, you may have times that you don't want to eat this particular food, but it's going to work most of the time and work well. You're not going to hate your diet. And to do that, what do we recommend? So, uh, usually what works best, let's say you're a busy dad, you know, I would say stick to two to three meals or two meals and one snack like most a lot of the people would cause you know when i eat like a thousand snacks every day like that's not going to work that's not going to keep you satiated for most people again you know there's always the the exception for which it, this might work but typically you know 
we want to keep it between two to three meals that are mostly automated, you know, that you eat on a daily basis that are mostly the same. You know, maybe you have like one to two alternatives, I would say, if you are extreme on variety, maybe three uh, variations. But uh, yeah, just keep it simple. Eat the same meals uh, during the day. You can be more flexible when it comes to dinner. Let's say you eat with your family. You know, we're not going to tell you to eat in the corner of the kitchen out of a tap or where your chicken and rice. I am. You know? I'm going to tell you if your family eats, it's like sitting, you want to lose weight, then you have to... That's my next point. You know, you obviously want to communicate your goals with your family if that's the case. You know, you want to get them uh, ideally on your team when you're trying to lose weight. And, uh, you know, sometimes people tell me, yeah, but uh, my kids can eat what I, you know, uh, what I eat. Well, do you want your kids to be eating things that are not good for them? You know, uh, it does help to have a more of a collective mindset in your family. Again, not always the case. Sometimes it doesn't work. But if you can get your, your wife on board, explain to her, you know, what are the reasons uh, you're eating this way and how can you, you know, make your dinners more aligned with your goals. Like most people's wives, you know, can get on board with that, you know, if you explain correctly, you know, your goals and everything. Yeah, but I got bored. Diet's boring. Mm -hmm. That's very boring. And it should be boring. Yeah, like, yeah true. You don't have to go fancy about it. Just find meals that work for you. Mm. And even if they're boring, do them over and over again. If you are way too bored and you can't do it anymore, just find another meal that works. What I'm trying to get at is automate your meals. Yeah. Do your the same meals pretty much every time. And if someday you want to change something, then change it. Especially if you're a busy person because uh, you aren't going anywhere. If uh, you're trying to eat fancy all the time, mm -hmm. nutrition is boring. It should be boring. You should approach it as if it's boring. But boring doesn't mean you don't you hate it or you don't like it. It means that you do pretty much the same meals because um, that way you can automate it and you can meal prep or not meal prep, fast or not fast, but do the thing that works for you and do it over and over again and do it well. So what's a good day to structure your day? Like so, cereal. Is that a good breakfast? Yeah, it's amazing. Is that going to give me energy? Yeah, Mr. Kellogg's, I think. Mr. Kellogg's was an, probably an opponent of Mr. Roosevelt here. Yeah, I think Roosevelt killed him. Like, he no. could have killed him because essentially Mr. Kellogg um, wanted to... Uh, how do you say it? He, he was a pervert. He didn't want kids to masturbate, actually. That was the reason. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you know that story. True story. You can yeah, search that. I didn't know. I'm not 100% sure. Guys... Researchers of the internet, keyboard warriors, drop down your, like, tell us, is that true or yeah. not? Right? And do you eat cereal in the morning? So um, this, this comes to basically what we were talking in the beginning, like most men under eat protein, right? Yep. So you like to, to start most of your, like most of your day, uh, how do you call it? Front loaded. Front load, yeah, sorry. Uh, I like to front load and that's the best uh, tactic if you want to succeed. So start by front loading mm. your protein. And this is the best structure that I always recommend. So pretty much it is um, start your day off with like, if you like scoops of protein, you can have, if you like protein supplements, which yep. there's no harm about it, right? Uh, you can start your day with just two scoops of protein or just a, like one cup of Greek yogurt mixed in with um, some whey protein powder um, and have two of your protein portions for the day, yep. um, like complete. And then you can have um, like two, like you can have some lean protein um, during your lunch with a bit of veggies, and then keep all your uh, carbs and backload them for you for for the meal that you're eating with your family. That's the best thing you can do. And this way, nutrition is going to be a piece of cake, yeah. very much effortless. Yeah. Uh, but not until you get the hang of it, not until you try at first, not until you start measuring and tracking, and not until you go through this valley of despair, as mm -hmm. they like to call it, where things are a bit hard, that you're learning that new skill. Because as we said, you can't um, jump on a surf surfing board for the first time and expect to be a champion yeah. Yeah. at surfing. Yeah. It's crazy. It's absurd. And this, because you expect that, is why your diet freaking sucks. Mm -hmm. And done. That's it. I, I, we, we, we don't need to keep on going forever here. So, we're, guys, if we're done, if, we're done. Yeah, if, if you like this podcast, if you if you like this episode, if this spoke to you and yeah. made sense and you need some help, um, we have a link uh, to our coaching below. 
if you need help with it. If you don't need coaching, then um, and you can apply everything we say here, you're still going to see results. Yep. So whatever it is, just make sure that you like this video, that you drop a comment below and you support us in any which way that you want. Yes. If you want to see more of us, uh, we're going to keep, keep doing those if we see that you like them. Indeed. And that's it. That's so it. until next time, guys. Keep on training.